I hope he's ready. Or... Yes, I'm ready. <clears throat> okay, Professor, would you like to share your screen with us? Okay, um, can you permit me to share the screen? Yes, you can do it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Just click on this green button, share screen, and then, okay, it's coming. Great. Maybe you put it. Okay, in, thank you very much. Maybe you put it in presentation mode. Yes, 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 it's okay. Um, can you see? Yes, now it's, yeah. Dear Professor, you have 20 minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> this talk, um, let me start by thanking the organizers of this conference for permitting me to uh, share part of what I'm doing over the years and uh, um, some of the areas of my research uh, over the years. Uh, this talk deals with the uh, modeling uh, magnetotama bandy layer flow of nanofluids and its engineering cooling applications. Um, the presentation overview is uh, as described uh, as follows. You have introduction, review, fundamental questions, model formulations, numerical approach, numerical result, conclusion reference. Now, um, <clears throat> what is MHD? Because you look at the title, it deals with magneto fluid. So MHD deals with magneto hydrodynamics and is the study of the direction of magnetic field with conducting fluids. And this is extremely important to study because of its engineering applications, because a magnetic field has a strong effect on the, um, conducting fluids, especially nanofluids, which are made up of uh, nanoparticles that are metallic particles that are susceptible to magnetic fields. Okay, so, and you can see that uh, the concept of uh, MHD is a very great concept in science and engineering, and it has won a kind of Nobel Prize for Arfen, uh, who got the Nobel Prize on the work on the, uh, on the, on the uh, MHD. Now, um, what is in bandy layer? Bandy layer just simply means when a fluid flow on the surface, when you have a fluid to flow on the surface, for instance, when the surface is very, very hot, you want to cool the surface. What we normally do is to put fluid on top of the surface to extract the heat out of the surface. So when that fluid flow on the surface, the dynamics of the flow need to be studied. And uh, when we study it, we'll be able to know how to enhance the cooling rate of the surface. And some of the applications uh, are very wide. For instance, uh, although in this talk, I'm talking about the industrial cooling, engineering cooling of services, because some of, too many engineering devices, they do generate heat from time to time and they need to be cooled. And the modeling will enable us to be able to know the right type of fluid to use and under what condition can we get the best results. So these are the uh, bottom line, that for the bottom lines of the of the of the of the of the work I'm presenting. So Blasius in 1908 deals with the concept of bandy layer flow. And uh, it was Blair was a student of planting. He look at the issue, but his own motive is to look at the flow over aerofoil, the dynamics of aerofoil. You see aircraft moving in the air. That is his own motive to study this kind of uh, bandy layer flow for the aerofoil. And he was able to have some what we call similarity solutions that uh, give some reasonable uh, pre uh, solution that predict the drag on the, on the aerofoil and also how to reduce the drag. But in this, we are going to look at the concept of nanofluid. What is nanofluid? Nanofluid, as you are aware of from what has been talked previously, uh, you can see is a mixture of nanoparticles. Nanoparticles, you know, Nano particles of 10 to power minus nine nano size particles. So you fabricate metallic or non-metallic uh, uh, material in form of nanoparticles. And these metallic and non-metallic materials 
they are, they are highly conductive. They have high thermal conductivity. But you have a liquid like water, uh, oil, and uh, polymer solution and so on. The thermal conductivity is very small, very low. But the nanoparticles have high thermal conductivity. When you mix nanoparticles, just small percentage, you mix it like 1% of nanoparticles with uh, this uh, volume of uh, water under laboratory condition, the, you see that the thermophysical properties of this uh, uh, outcome, which is called nanofluid, will be very different from this ordinary water because it will have better uh, thermal conductivity and a better magnetic susceptibility based depending on the nanoparticle you use. So this is what is called nanofluid. What are the, uh, you can see with this what I've mentioned here. If you look at here, you can see that uh, Ordinary uh, fluid liquids like NG oil, ethnic gear, cold water, their thermal conductivity is very low. But when you get to aluminum silicon, uh, aluminum copper sliver, they have high thermal conductivity. So, and for you to extract it from a hot surface, you need a liquid of high thermal conductivity that can conduct the heat, that can extract the heat. So, if you marry the uh, metallic nanoparticle with the liquid at, at, at a, a small percentage of this, it improves the, the, the heat transfer enhancement of the, of, the, of the base fluid, which can be oil, ethnic a, a, a or water. Uh, it can be any of these fluids, they're a liquid. They, you get a very uh, excellent uh, 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 coolant, which will be able to enhance the cooling rate of the surface. And that's very important in terms of uh, engineering applications of cooling uh, of hot surfaces. So these are the concepts. What are the applications? The applications, you can see various applications. The applications, electronic cooling, electronic gadgets, they generate heat. With the use it with help of nanofluid, you can get a better cooling rate for efficient performance. Also, you know, in the, in the, in the transport in, in industry, most of our vehicles, uh, uh, we, we, we use coolant in the vehicles, aircraft, and so on, to make sure that uh, it, 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 it reduces the heat produced by the engine for efficient operation. Even in industry, when you want to, in, in metal casting, when you want to cast metal that are already in multi form, you have to cool them. Using nanofluid, you can get a better shape, a better, uh, 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 a smooth material to a, a smooth shape in a better uh, uh, efficient material using nanofluid for cooling. Also, you can see nuclear power plants. In nuclear power plants, nanofluid can be used for cooling of nuclear power plants. Medical application is there. Even in military, in military, you can see some of the military equipment, when they are in operation, they generate a lot of heat. And when they generate a lot of heat, nanofluid is used in cooling them for efficient operation, under operation. So these are many many uh, uh, applications of nanofluid. Now let's go to the model itself. The fundamental concept in the modeling of nanofluid is based on the continuum mechanics. The continuum mechanics involve the, the fundamental law, I mean, of, of, of uh, conservation of mass, which is continuity equations, conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy. Here we are dealing with uh, a single phase nano, na nano fluid model. So you, you have this, you assume that the fluid, the liquid we are talking about is incompressible. Then you have continuity equation given the divergence of the, of the velocity uh, factor to be zero. And uh, the Navier-Stokes equation, if you assume that you are talking of a Newtonian liquid, Newtonian liquid, then you can use Navier-Stokes equation. You can assume water or your, the, in this case, I'm using Newtonian liquid. So you can have non-Newtonian. Then we have, uh, when you mix this neutral liquid with a nanoparticle, then you have the equation becoming the density of nano fluid, and this is a, a dynamic viscosity of nano, nano fluid. And then you have this one with a Lorentz force. Lorentz force is given like the, is the, is the force where you, where you apply magnetic field to the flowing of nano of conducting fluid. There is a Lorentz flux, which is a force that try to slow down the, 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 the movement of the fluid. And this is very important in cooling 
surfaces because you don't want the fluid to flow very fast. You want to slow it down. So you apply this Lorentz force, which is a current density across the magnetic field factor. So you have this one, this energy equation, which comes from the uh, first law of thermodynamics. And you have this one as Joe eating, which is the effect of magnetic field. Then you have the Maxwell equation, which also come into play because of the presence of Lorentz force and Joe eating in the, in the energy equations. These are body force, we call it body force. And these are internal generation due to uh, magnetic field, which you have there. So when you have all these, the concept of Maxwell equation to magnetism comes in, which you have to apply to get this Lorentz force and so on. Now, without wasting time, remember, this one is Ohm's law, which you have there, and the Faraday is this, and the Ohm's law. And this one, the all forms, what you call Maxwell equation, can be combined. Then the thermophysical properties of the base fluid and nano fluid is needed for us to predict when we do the experiment in the lab. We want to predict how each of these nano fluid will, will work, which one will give us a better result. In this case, I'm using pure water as my base fluid, which is uh, having density as follows, and copper nanoparticles is having density as follows, and alumina data. These are their specific heat properties. And this is the thermal conductivity. And this one is electrical conductivity of each of these. Uh, uh, and this one can be obtained uh, from the literature. They are there. And under laboratory condition, we can obtain all these uh, properties, which can be uh, obtained. Now, these are the relationship between nanofluid density. And this F is for nanofluid. I mean, it's for base fluid. And S substitute denotes that of a uh, nanoparticle. And phi is the amount, the quantity of the nanoparticle you mix with the nano, with the base fluid. If phi is one, that means you fill up the whole base fluid with nanoparticle. And that cannot work. We have to use up to maybe 10% maximum. You can, I mean, you can use 0.1% of nanoparticle. It, will be, it, it creates a lot of difference than using only base fluid. So this phi can be 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and so on. Very small amount of nanoparticle. So these are the thermal relation, thermal, uh, uh, thermophysical properties, which we have, to, we have to use. And this one is electrical conductivity. All these are empirical results, which are in the literature based on the experiments on the relationship between nanofluid, nanoparticle, and base fluid. So we have this one, the thermal conductivity of base fluid, and so on. And this one is the electric, I mean, is the, uh, dynamical viscosity of nano fluid, and this one is the start of base fluid. Anyway, let's go to the model. This is the model. The model is assuming there is a chemical reaction taking place here that is generating heat, or you are having nuclear reactor generating heat. Now, you want to put a nano fluid to make sure it cools this surface because if the heat generated, if the heat generated here, if you have the heat generated and the generation of heat, is continued, then this surface can be damaged if the heat is not taken out. So then also, the, the surface here can zoom. This surface, due to the heating of this surface, there can be stressing of the surface. The surface can stress, or the surface itself can shrink. There can be shrinking of the surface. You can have shrinking surface. You can have a stressing surface. So all this, uh, what's going on here? So, um, yeah, um, I don't know what is going on with the program. So it's not responding. There's a freezing here of the, oh, the program. I guess. I don't know why it's freezing. I think you were re removed from the full screen mode. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know why. Okay, maybe what I do here, let me share it, let me share again. Okay. Sorry for that, you know, this technology, one can have all this. Yeah. The OT just froze in. Now I'm, 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 sorry, I'm putting it again to share. Yes. Okay, now I will move very fast. I don't want to use more than 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. 
Can you see me? Yes, we see okay. you, but not the screen. Let me let me hear now. Here. Okay. Um let me just go very fast now. Okay, you have three minutes left. <laughs> three minutes? Yeah. Oh. Okay. You have this, so let me go to the result. So when you do that, this uh, we have the model. Then we have this model is what we got. The model equation is this. We solve this model equation. These are the parameters we have there. These are the solution, the method we use. These are the solution. For the solution here, we see that for string, can you see? Okay. Now for shrinking surface. Yes. For shrinking surface, we realize that we have dual solution. There is a solution here for shrinking surface, the dot one, and uh, you have this one. So for shrinking surface, we have dual solution, the upper solution and the lower solution. That's what we have. This upper solution is what we discover in the experimental observation. This is due to the nonlinearity of the problem. And this is what we have here. And also for, we have this one for shrinking surface. We also do the hydrodynamic stability analysis of the problem to know which one is the correct solution. So when we do the hydrodynamic stability of the problem, this is what we get. We see that the upper solution branch is one that is stable. The lower solution branch is unstable because it's giving us the negative eigenvalue. And if you put negative where it will diverge. The one that converges is the, uh, that you get made the disturbance to go to zero and give us the basic solution, which is observed in engineering experiments is what we have as the upper solution, which means when you look at the solution, the solution you get on the experiment is this. What are we saying? The solution which we have here is saying now, uh, if you have nanoparticle, you have nanoparticle in the, in the fluid, you are going to get a better cooling rate. And at the same time, you are going to have the skin friction, which you have the effect of the fluid on the, on the, on the surface will be more. However, you get a better cooling rate. That is what we have under the velocity profile, which we have here. Um, sorry. Yes, you can see here. Now, from here, you can see the, 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 um, what we have here as a, as a, as for, for alumina and copper. Alumina, copper will be a, a better coolant. It flow closer to the surface than alumina water. Alumina is red. So this one, the, the bandy layer thickness of copper water, which you have here, of copper water is smaller than that of uh, alumina water. So copper water will give you a better coolant. And that is what we have there. And you see where you have uh, five zero, that means, no nano fluid, then the fluid flow away from the surface very fast. When as you increase the nano fluid is ten percent, zero point one, move closer to the surface. That is what we have, and that is what you see here also in the result display here. Uh, uh, you can see that from here, power water is this. It takes it, the temperature is very high. It takes it more than when you use ordinary water. The temperature of the, at the surface is very, very low. So it takes low heat than using copper water. And it cools the surface very high because it, it enhances the heat transfer from the surface and the cooling rate. So those are the things we have. Anyway, let me give you the conclusion. In question time, probably I'll be able to, to be able to speak more in the question time. Nano fluid velocity increase uh, from the wall. Uh, I mean, from the wall towards the free stream. The free stream is away from the surface, velocity increase, and uh, because of the shrinking and stressing, velocity bandy layer thickness for uh, alumina water nanofluid is greater than that of copper water, which means copper water will be a better coolant for the surface. And also, you can see here now that I've increased the magnetic field. The cooling rate increases as well because it makes the fluid, it, it decreases the thickness of bandy layer, increases the, the, the magnetic field, which is M. And they increase the nano value, they, they decrease the value of thickness, and which means you can take on more, more, more heat from the surface. That is the effect of magnetic field. And you can also see if this, the surface is slippery, a slippery rate of the surface. So this 
this award we have here, um, dual solution exists where you have a sinking surface due to heat. You have two aspects. The upper solution branch will be the real solution which will be observed from the experiment. So when you are using this to predict in the engineering uh, 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 fabrications of, this, of, of materials, you have to make sure that the material does not shrink, but the more the material shrink under it. It shows that the solution to, 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 to observe will be the upper solution branch, which will be the one to take note of in the issue of cooling of the surface. And then for stressing surfaces, there is a unique solution we obtain, we obtain here, which there's no problem about that. And then finally, to enhance the cooling rate at heated surface using nanofluid, it is as, as advisable to regulate the value of various embedded parameters with respect to engineering and industrial applications. So this is what the model produced. And we have worked with people, for instance, uh, here in South Africa, we have a, a laboratory called Intemba Lab, where we have uh, a, a big study of a, a fabrication and application of nanofluid going on there. Some of the results are similarly useful in terms of modeling and to confirm what they are getting in the experimental results. Many papers have been published on this type of issues, but there was a paper published with, with, the, with, the, with, that, lab, with that engineering laboratory that we're able to, to confirm some of these results that when you, uh, when you, when you add nanoparticles under magnetic field, the heat enhancement rate, the cooling rate is higher than when you use ordinary nanofluid without the application of magnetic field. And the only reason is because of Lorentz force which decreases the flow, therefore enhances the rate at which it can be taken from the surface. So that is what, which solves the physics of the problem as well, that is what is agreeable with the physics of the, of the, of the, of the concept of uh, application of a credit field in the direction of the flow. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the, the technology that, uh, uh, that, that go down and so on, but during question time, we can, we can deliberate and Probably I will throw more light on the model. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, uh, for yeah, your yeah, talk. You. Very detailed. So there is a question that I can read from the forum. Okay, okay. And then uh, it's from Ad Masu. Okay. Asking, uh, saying that the result from the result which graphically comes from experimental or numerical solution. Okay, he's asking if the result is coming from experimental or numerical solution of the primitive equation. Oh, sorry, thank, the result is coming from numerical solution. What? The result, this is a, it's not from experimental, it's purely numerical. Okay. And this numerical solution, which you observe, is confirmed to agree with experimental observation. Okay. So have you done an experiment or a group did a group carry on the yeah, that is a that the, 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 that is a group that is a group have looked at their results in South Africa here yeah, call it in Temba lab it's a it's a lab uh which is based on UNESCO funding which is under Professor Malik Massa they work on issue of nano particles and fabrication of nanoparticles and so on and uh, the issue of nano fluid as well. So when we look at the heat transfer enhancement in terms of the of the of the of the work they do, you can see the result producing here confirm some of the. In fact, we had the paper in uh, 2018 on joint paper together on the issue of uh, nano fluid, nano fluid uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 the issue of nano nano fluid and the experimental work in fabricating and so on. And it confirms some of the results. And also in the literature, in the experimental literature, some of the results are also confirmed, which are compared in the paper. Some of the other papers are published thereafter in 2019, 2020. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I, I think that your, your talk was interesting for many people because I see many people who want to ask questions, but now we yes, have yes, yes, yes. time. There's yes, a, yes. Who want to ask a question, Robinson, who wants yeah, to ask Yes, a yes. But I don't know. We, I think yeah, it's yeah. that maybe you talk privately, even if you don't have the discussion. No, no, we, can, we can give one or two. Maybe allow at least one. Okay, more. Robinson, just quickly. Okay, it's okay. Thank you, Prof. Like yes, uh, in, in your formulation, you yes. consider the incomprehensible fluid. 
Yes, yes, yes. Okay, why, okay what of a, a model for is if that's comprehensible? Okay. Because of the continue question, continue the question, you said that uh, you, didn't, you didn't include row, the row value. No, no, no. This one is incomprehensible. You know when it's incomprehensible, yes. the density is as to be averagely constant. It's constant. Okay, okay, okay yes. What, 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 now, what of? It's compressible. Mm. The density will be very. Okay, that, is that it possible? Yes, I know, I know. Uh, yes. I know. Is it possible to have a to consider a flu flu that's comprehensible? Com, 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 com. Yes. That's comprehensible, yes. Yes, com, 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 like gas, like gas, like okay. air. Okay. Air is a compressible fluid. You can call, we can look at that. In that okay. case, our fluid here, our base fluid. Mm -hmm. The you know, the base fluid here is water. Okay, okay. The, which is which is compressible. compressible. I mean, which is incompressible. Incompressible, incompressible yes. But when you talk of uh, Complain like like that. What can be air or gas you are using? Okay, it's, it's okay. I think so, I have to stop the, the, the session, right? Okay, please. Uh, can I ask uh, one question? I think, I think yeah. it's better to ask to the professor directly in private because or maybe the discussions because now we are out of uh, uh, the schedule, right? Okay, please let me discuss okay. my, my my address. I've collaborated with several people in India, in Pakistan, and Algeria, okay. so. In Africa, also, please, you can contact me. I can formulate so many, even for, for compressible, I formulate some problems yes. where you can use gas and all those things, and the equation will change and get a better result. We can be test through experiments. So, okay, Prof, I think the, the meeting is also the equation, uh, the location for people to get contact. So, you people can be.